basically if we did want to play you just nudge the joystick and then we come back big thing i always get it's really a track mode there's a lot of stuff going on but a track mode does have a semi kind of little lag to it as you can see it's like it's like a one to two like i don't want to say milliseconds but you could kind of see it the big thing is that when you have the volume up you will kind of hear the sound stutter it's just only in a track mode because there's a lot of stuff going on there's a lot of wheel art going on so basically if we wanted to exit out your second button here brings you back try to think of this forward and back so i'm going back if i wanted to let's just say pick an item such as consoles you press the first button which is your enter button and then from there you could pick a console so for example here this is where you could kind of see it there's a lot of videos there's a lot of stuff going on and you could actually kind of hear it so check this out you will hear like that you kind of hear like the static to it so you kind of hear it sounds like like a like a bad speaker it's just that because it's transitioning from screen to screen so it only happens there um but real quick we'll load up a couple of arcade games just to show it i'm now trying to get into the habit of showing different arcade games instead of just doing street fighter but obviously we always do street fighter because street fighter is the best way to test our buttons so as you can see we do have 2200 arcade games i do have my buttons set to next letter and previous letter so instead of you holding up on the joystick you could always just skip to the letter one button again our enter button is here we also have our admin buttons at the bottom so let the game load arcade games always go through this kind of boot sequence that's how the actual arcade game loaded up it gives you always like a little warning don't do drugs kind of thing bump up the volume coin buttons at the top always like to make sure that both buttons work player two and again, as you can see, we will load up the dynamic duo Ryo versus Ken. This is pretty cool. This is like Heat Miser versus Snow Miser. Always use Street Fighter to test all your buttons to just make sure that they are all working and registering. That is the best way to do it. So you always go down the line. We always go left, right, up, down, left, right, up, down. Can we do it? There it is. One-handed on Dugans. No cuts on that. On my Instagram feed, I did two of them. I did the second one. Okay. That's a third one. Can we do reverse for Ken? I got to practice that. But as you can see, one-handed on Dugans. Our admin controls down here. There is always a shift, save, load, exit. So I could save this state right now. Or if I was playing before, I could always load it, which I should have a game. And there you go, I actually did have a game loaded up. I went back to a game that I was actually playing before. And there you have it. So there's a save feature and a load feature. You always have to hold shift, save. I just saved it. Every time you save, there is yellow wording here. And basically now, we are now saved and ready to play again if we're getting our butt kicked. Couldn't do a one-handed on that. <laughs> now we're gonna exit out, shift, exit, and we are set. The one thing I really want to do in this video for Justin, and again, I'm still, you know, you still discover stuff. Keep in mind, there is 15,000 games. Nobody ever tests all 15,000 games, but I do want to load up, I believe it was the NES. Let's do the NES real quick. Just want to load up one thing just in case um, Justin decides. I don't remember if it was the NES or the Super NES. Let me see. I'm going to load up a game like uh, Super Mario. Just in case Justin decides to change um the four by three uh the the resolution to a 16 by nine or a four by three i'll show you real quick how you could do it basically you hold the shift button and you press button two I'm doing it one-handed you could do it two-handed and basically this is going to load up a screen like this you basically go down to settings and on this menu it's here this button here is to enter this is to go back you go into video and then you come down to aspect ratio. Some people do leave it as core provided. Core provided, as you can see right now, there is the black bars here. Once you're done, I'm going too fast. I should go slow, I'm sorry. You could kind of actually play around with the aspect ratio. So as you can see, I put it to core provided. You do see the black bars here. You could always go right. I always do 16 by nine, it's a full screen stretch. But as you can see, you could play around with it. 
if I did want to, let's say, leave it like that, and I'm set, I picked it, you basically go back, you're going to see this menu, you go back, you're going to see this menu, you're going to go to configurations, this is our enter button here, and then we're going to go to save current configuration, enter. And as you can see, it saved it, you go back, and you could then quit RetroArch, or if you wanted to continue playing, because if you do quit RetroArch, it will exit the game, you basically hold shift, and player two button again, player one button, I'm sorry, button two, and now you're back to normal. This is really how this game should be. You do have the black bars here. I mean, I'm personally not a total fan of it. And then sometimes you have to learn which button does what. So as you can see, we are playing, again, black bars here. Real quick, I'm gonna go and bring me back to a 16 by nine this way you could kind of at least see the difference on it. Boom. So I mean, to me again, I'm gonna actually save because I'm gonna leave it for Justin like that in case he wants it. So this, I mean, to me, it's a 22 inch screen. You might as well keep it as a stretch screen. I don't think it's a big deal, but some people do think of it as a big deal. And now we're playing some Super Mario 3. That's it. If you are bored, again, same thing. You could save the game here. So shift save, shift exit. If I'm done exiting, I could exit out. We go back. I believe I did the same thing to Super Nintendo. So I could enter into Super Nintendo. And again, these buttons here are our letters. So as you can see here, we are under Adam's family. So if I press this button here, it's next letter. This is previous. So B, C, D, E, F. So if I wanted to play, let's say Super Mario, I'll hold down JK, LMNOP, QRS, T, and then I'll go up because the alphabet, Super Mario, you could do Super Street Fighter. I don't know if it's actually Super Mario. It might just be Mario. Oh, there it is. Super Mario World, Super Mario Kart, Super Mario All-Stars, which is a classic game. And again, first button to enter in, and you are in. Again, four-player mod on this, so two arcade sticks, and you have two wireless PlayStation controllers. As you can see, again, full screen stretched on this. The only real reason that sometimes people don't like it is that like some people say like the wording gets like pixelated. So I'm actually going to leave it like that. I'm going to bring this back if I could do it one handed. I was able to do one handed all day. Okay. You're going to see this screen right here. So we could either go down, go to options. Oh, I'm sorry. You're actually going to press back on that. I'm messing this up. I'm sorry. And you will go to settings again, enter. We're going to go to video. And we're going to go to aspect ratio core provided means that's what the game was actually meant for. I'm actually just going to exit out. Can I just resume like this? Again, I'm literally trying to do this with one hand. So that's what it really was meant to be. You can see the black bars here. Let's see if anything changes to the wording on in post. I'll probably show a difference on this. But to me, I really don't see that much of a difference. I do see a difference, but it's not that drastic where you get a headache that some people claim to get. But Again, that's what I usually like to do is set it to 16 by nine. And again, as you can see, you can play it. It's mimicking a Super Nintendo controller. Now we're done playing, you shift exit, and then you're back on the menu. You can press back on this. Let's say you didn't want to play any more consoles and you wanted to play maybe the arcade, you go up on the joystick. Again, a track mode does have this mini lag to it. I know about it. There's nothing you could really do about it. There's just so much artwork going on. Same thing, let's say we wanted to play Miss Pac-Man, instead of you holding up on the joystick to go through it, you just use the skip letter function, elemental P, LMN, I'm going up. Uh, Miss Pac-Man is MRS, so it's probably better to go from there, and we just hit one, Miss Pac-Man. There you go, easy. Now just keep in mind, the joysticks are always set forever as player one and player two. So some people, um, I do have a build coming up that the customer wants to use a wireless controller for player one. They ask, what can we do? How can I do it? So I'll show you real quick how you do it. Basically, where you pick your main wheel, there is a track mode, which is really settings. You go into settings on that, and then we're gonna find the retro arc setup. It looks like a bug. There are two retro arcs kind of images. You don't wanna do the net play one. I've never really touched into that. 
you always want to aim for the retro arc but before i go into this it is always good to turn on one of your wireless controllers before you do it so right now our joystick our other controller is so right now our other controller is not on so the raspberry pi only sees the zin mo he only it only sees two players so before you go in and let's say you want to use this controller as player one you should turn on the joystick first you should turn this on first so let this blink let this connect again i do pre-configure this so this will work so this right now is reading as you can't really see it but it's reading as player three so basically now that i have that on i'm going to go into our menu here we're going to go into retro arc and we're going to press enter let it load while we are here we're going to go to settings and again in retro arc our enter button is this we're going to go down to where is it input good we're going to go down to input user one binds and the big thing is here the device index that's what was reading it right now this is reading as zinmo controller number one that's player one number one if i did want to change it you would actually before anything So this right now is showing Zinmo. This right now is showing Zinmo number one. So this is joystick one. The very difficult thing that some people get lost is that I'm gonna change this right now. If I do change it, I can either go left or go right. If I do go right, I believe it goes to Zinmo number two. So let's just see real quick. If I go right, it went to Zinmo number two. Some people now get scared because now this doesn't work. As you can see right now, this doesn't work. It's because now it's reading Zinmo number two. We want to play with the PlayStation controller. So now on our Zinmo number two, we're going to go right. I'm going to literally hit right. And now you can see we do have the PlayStation controller number one, it should say, or just regular PlayStation controller. If I did have the other one, it would have said one or two. Now I am able to navigate this screen, as you could see, with the PlayStation controller. Right now, let's say Justin wants to use this as player one. I believe circle is to go back, yes. Circle is to go back. Circle is to go back. And you have to go to configurations, X to enter, and save current configuration. Wording comes up, and now you are all set. Circle to go back, and then quit retro arc. The arcade sticks will still work in a track mode. But when you load up a game, this is player one. This also, I believe, no, the arcade sticks, I have it set for track mode for the joysticks, but in the game, let's just load it real quick. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. So now again, in the game, this will read as player one. So we're gonna go back and let's just real quick load up an arcade game. I don't know what RetroArch makes the joystick now. Again, a track mode is totally different settings than the actual emulator. So right now, I'm using player one joystick to navigate the screen, but in this game right now, it is going to be the PlayStation controller that's gonna work. Again, this is player one. Just to make sure, I'm gonna press coin. Yeah, see, my coin doesn't work here. It will work on my PlayStation controller. So now, people do like this because Pac-Man, you do need a four-way joystick. And as you can see right now, I am using the D-pad. Again, real quick, nothing's working here nothing's working here that's why we are using this i believe in all honesty right now um it actually this save state button won't work now as you can see this does not work so shift on this type of controller is the select button my only issue is i don't really know which button <laughs> would be to save to be honest Let's go real quick into input. I guess you could do this also. You could change your input hotkeys. As you can see, like see here, load state is button nine. Save state is button 10. Uh, quit retro arc is button eight. So each joystick is like different. So let's see, we need to know nine, 10, eight. And my enable, which is my shift is 11. 
so what is that? 8, 8, 9, 10, 11. We need to know what buttons are 8, 9, 10, 11. So if I go to user 1, let's just see. See here? Okay, here we go. Button 8 is L2. Button 9 is R2. L and R. So like, as you can see, this is all auto too. This is all probably, yeah, this is all pre-configured. So like, as you can see, if I hold shift and I forgot which one it is, but you could basically see which button combination you could do. Real quick though, I'm gonna show you how now to go back. This is a very important step. I mean, this is crucial. If you mess this up, you're gonna to need to get a USB keyboard. But if we do wanna go back from PlayStation to the joysticks, you're gonna highlight over device index. This is very important. You are gonna go left. Do not go right. Going right is gonna disable player one. That's when you need a, joy a keyboard. You're gonna go left. Going left brings you to Zinmo number two. So now we have to go left on Zinmo number two. And now we have Zinmo number one and we are back to normal. See that? It's very important if you go right you would now need a keyboard. There's no way around it. You need a keyboard, so do not go right. Very simple now. We're gonna go back, we're gonna go back, and we're gonna save our configurations. That is it. That is how to go from playing with the arcade sticks to a controller. On that note, this concludes Justin's build. Justin, man, I really hope you enjoy the arcade. This was a little bit of a lengthy video. I might have to make it into two separate videos, but I really hope you enjoy the arcade, buddy. Good work on this arcade.